Welcome back to Jeffco Builds. I'm Jeffco. This is Jeffco Builds. On today's episode, we are discussing wiring and lots of it. Four days worth to be exact. This little combo here, four days. I'm not done. Not really not even that close to done. I got it most of the way wired, but all the fine finishing details, not done. So come along, I'll show you what I did and then I'll finish it. You know, I spent a lot of time on the floor in these videos, but whatever. These are 200 amp hour Dakota lithium batteries. They are lithium, they're 200 amp hours. Combined, they make 400 amp hours. After we use these fancy little wires and throw in a third battery, we'll have 600 amp hours. So that'll be pretty sweet. This right here, this is a generic charger. It's keeping the batteries tuned up while I test the system and work on it. So that is a temporary solution as of now. However, I have considered wiring one of these temporary chargers in a shore power plug. That way, if I want to connect only my batteries into a charge circuit, I can without running through my inverter. So that's a thought I have, but for now, this is a temporary situation. Next up, we have the Victron MPPT 15070 TR. 150 for 150 volts, 70 for amperage. Side next to it, we have a Orion TR Smart 241230. So that's a 24 volt input voltage, 12 volt output at 30 amps charge rate. So with these two units, I actually only have the output done on the DC to DC charger. The reason being, I haven't got around to wiring the input yet, but when I do wire the input, I intend to put a switch in it so I can isolate this system from the truck system. So if I'm parked for long periods of time, I can shut that off and uh, hopefully keep from discharging my truck batteries or I don't know, maybe there's other reasons. Good to isolate stuff. So that's getting a switch on it. That's why we haven't started that little guy yet. Over here on our MPPT controller, we have this fully wired with the exception of the solar panels. We used, um, what did we use? We used Ancor Marine two gauge wire for our battery supply. And then we used a 10 gauge wire from our solar array. For those of you that are not familiar, the reason the solar array wires are so much smaller is because they do not carry a lot of amperage, but they do carry a lot of voltage, thus the 150 volt capacity. So on this little guy, I did run a switch and that switch actually isolates this unit from the solar array. So if I want to turn that switch off, I can shut that switch off and then I have no current coming in from my solar panels because as we all know, if the sun's up, they're charging. So if we want to shut that voltage off, we do so with this switch right here, which happens to be a Blue C, which is a really good company. And all you got to do is turn it on, off. So that's how we're isolating our solar panels. This little fella is a 400 amp fuse. We're putting this before our switch for our main disconnect between the battery and our switch. Here's our switch. This guy is also a Blue C, which is a really good company. I think I said that before. It's currently on too. So I'm not gonna shut that guy off right now. Anywho, this comes from our battery bank and routes through the switch and then back to the power inverter. While we're on this wall, I'll just give you a tour of the whole thing. Here we've got a 12 volt um, fused rocker assembly by Blue C. So each one of these guys is protected with its specific amperage, you can actually order them with different amperages, but due to COVID, that's really hard to do, so you kinda gotta settle and get a 15 amp if you want one. So, anyway, this is all 12 volt, which I've set up for accessory power. Um, this is gonna be my water pump, which says water pressure, and then this one here is for my refrigerator. So, real simple. This guy here 
is our shore to generator AC selector. So very simple, you leave it in the off position when you're not connected to anything. If you got the generator running, this green light will light up and you can swap to that and you can charge and actually help assist your inverter with the generator function. Same thing goes with shore, it'll show availability. This will actually show you reverse polarity as well. So this is very simple. Um, most RVs do this automatically, but they're crappy. So we're gonna go with the good old fashioned manual switch. Next to it, we have the Magnum Energy Controller. This controls our inverter and it has a lot of functions that we need to do a lot of reading on how to operate this properly. Moving up, this guy is our AC panel. So here we've got a 30 amp breaker and then we've got two 15 amp circuits. So my first 15 amp circuit is gonna be for my air conditioner. It's gonna be a dedicated circuit. And then my second circuit is gonna run all the outlets in the whole thing. So I don't think I'll have a bunch of load on my outlets because most everything I'll be running off a of 12 volt. So we're gonna head and run that on one circuit. Moving up in the world, we've got a few things going on. In this corner, we have our interior temperature. We have our voltage currently on our battery bank. Both of these are gonna be for our diesel heaters. This one will be for the hydronic heater. This will be for the air heater. And then this little fella here is the interior temp. Did I already say interior temp? One's interior, one's exterior. They're both exactly the same temperature right now. So I don't know the difference between them, but one's interior, one's exterior. All right, so here we are in the bathroom, which this behind me is actually the wall all of those panels that we just looked at are in. So I'm gonna turn the camera and show you what each one is doing here. So up here, and I'm not gonna touch anything because right now everything's live, but up here is our AC switch panel, uh, temperature sensor, voltage, temperature sensor. Uh, this wire here is actually coming from outside. This is our generator power supply. This is the power supply coming from the, uh, what's it called? Inverter, yeah, that's the word, inverter. So that's the power coming from the inverter. And then down here, this of course is the back side of our big switch, which is our uh, main disconnect for our battery bank. This is our whole 12 volt panel. In this corner, a bus bar for all of our negative wires on the DC side. This side, even though it's red, I had it, so I used it. This guy here is our AC side uh, bus bar for the negative side. And then these panels are actually bonded together. So this wire here is a bonding cable that loops from one side to the other, which I'm slightly unsure about, but that's what it said in the manual, so that's what I did. And going on from there as we move down, you can see we've got everything high and tight here, snug together. Um, all of our big cables here. Down here, this is one of the data cables, which they gave me about 300,000 feet of. So I coiled it up and I zip tied and screwed it to the wall to keep it out of my hair. And that's the back of this panel. So some of you are probably wondering, but Jeff, what is that blue box? Well, folks, this blue box is the Lynx distributor. This essentially is a fusible bus bar. So rather than using separate buses with separate fuses, this combines it all into one package. And you know what? It's worth the money. So just buy it. After you spend all the time sourcing, buying fuses, separate bus bars, you probably could have bought this. These are awesome, they look good, they make your install look good, use one. So the next segment in our video is gonna be crimping wires. When you've got this gauge of wire and you're running this many, you need to invest in a hydraulic press style wire crimper and a bunch of the shrink wrap material. So I'll shoot you over to that, you can check it out, see how we did it on this whole job. All right, so this is how we're gonna crimp our wire with our uh, lug here. 
and I've got this set of Greenlee cutters, which are pretty awesome. And I'll take them and I'll just kind of run them around very lightly just to create a cut in the jacketing. Like so. And then you got to take a razor knife. I guess I should be doing this up here. Take a razor knife and slice the jacketing. And once you've made it, this is actually really thick jacket on here. Once you made it through there, you can just kind of start to peel it. You'll see that it'll just kind of peel away. We didn't cut all the way into our wire when we did that first cut. So you're left with a nice clean crimp. Now we'll take our shrink wrap and send it over the wire. Make sure we got all the little wire pieces here nice and tight and running in the same direction. And then we got our four aught um, connector here. Slide it over. Now we're at this point. Now we take this crimping tool, which was easy enough to get on Amazon. And this is a little hydraulic press that moves up and down. It'll crimp our wire for us. So we open up the jaws and this goes from very small wire all the way up to four aught. So you gotta make sure you get one that goes to four aught. A lot of them only go to two. So now we're gonna slide that over like so. And then we're gonna start the, we're gonna snug it up to the fitting here. Make sure that we like where everything's at. Make sure our wire is in deep enough. And then we can start our crimp. And you're just gonna keep squeezing this guy and it's like a little bottle jack, just pushing that into that die. And I go until it's really hard. Okay, so after a little bit of groaning there, that's our successfully crimped wire, which has like an octagon shape to it when it's done. Nice and tight, not gonna come off. Then we'll slide up our uh, jacketing, start our butane torch, and shrink wrap that guy on. All right, everybody, that's going to conclude today's video, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please like, subscribe, comment, do all the things that people do to make the YouTube algorithm tick, and uh, join me again next time on Jeffco Builds, where we will probably be working on more electrical, maybe some plumbing. So that's something that I think we can really improve on from your standard RV and uh, do a really good job using Propex fittings. So... Join me next time, and until then, I'm Jeff Coe, and this was my build.